Have you ever wondered how you can go from having about 100 subdomains belonging to a company to maybe 150 or 200 and doubling them in a few hours? Well, before we can do that, it's really important for us to understand how companies name their assets and what are they using for these naming conventions. These can be done in a number of different ways, but for us to be able to do this, we actually need to understand what permutations and environments are. So in this video, not only am I gonna talk about why it's important to look at these different environments, but I'm also going to show you exactly how to use tools and different word lists to accomplish this. But before we can jump into this video, it's really important for us to talk about how domains are set up. Usually a domain starts with a subdomain. The most common one is the www, w subdomain, the three w's that you always see. That's the main web page that you go to is the, the most common one. Then it's followed with the root domain. This is the company's name. So for example, PayPal, Yahoo, Google, that's the root domain. And then there is the top level domain, which could be the .com, it could be .net, it could be .io. And even some companies are Google on their own. So it could be .goog, I think is what Google uses. So those are the different levels to a domain. And it's really important for us to understand them before we can talk about this next part. But it doesn't just stop there. You don't just see subdomains. You can also see these subdomains being set up as zones, which are dedicated to different applications, different environments, and different testing purposes. So for example, instead of having www.paypal.com, you can have api.paypal.com, you can have dashboard.api.com, but then you can also have dashboard.dev paypal.com or even you can go as far as having an entire environment that dedicated a different app for example it could be stores so it could be app.store.paypal.com so these are different ways that companies can use domains environments zones whatever you want to call them to structure their infrastructure and also organize the way they're naming things for this example i've actually set up my own website it's called Hacking with Nahamsek or Hack with Nahamsek. You can go and see there's dashboard.hackwithnahamsek. And then we also have something like api.hackwithnahamsek set up. Well, that's not the only product Hack with Nahamsek has. What if I had stores? Now I mentioned that with PayPal. What if I had stores set up? I want to put APIs that belong to that store under the store zone. And I want to put the other dashboards that are for my streaming, for example, for api.stream.hackwithnahamsek.com. So that's how I, as a company, I'm going to separate my products by creating different zones and leveraging these subdomains to separate them. Well, it's not always like this. It's not always set up for different products. It could also be different environments. For example, you can have environments that are used to be used internal only. So you have to be on their VPN to access them. In most cases, you can have it for dev, QA, testing, and so on. The keyword that I keep using is environments. And I've also used permutations, which we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the environment is really, really important. When you understand how they're using these zones or these different subdomains, it gives you a better understanding of what and where to look for. So if I am chasing for internal domains, there's CI, CD pipeline tools, then I'm going to look for internal and dev domains. Versus if I'm looking for APIs, maybe to have a zone that's like something that api.sock.com, which could be completely different and we can find different assets. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to just talk to you about how to leverage these different ideas, these different environments and permutations we see to uncover more and more assets. Well, so far I've talked to you about different environments. That's whatever zone they use, whatever subdomain they use, and they put the subdomain before it. But that's not always the case. Some companies may not use this. Some smaller companies may use dashes and not even create an entire zone. So for example, instead of it being dashboard.dev.site.com, it's going to be dashboard-dev.site.com. So that's also something to keep in mind when it comes down to looking for different assets and extending your attack surface. Now that we understand how these things work, we're going to take a look at how do we find more and more of these subdomains. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to use one of your supplement finding tools. I've done a bunch of videos on this. You can go back and watch them, but you can use Sublister, Amass, you can use Search search, whatever it is, and you query for a list of subdomains. And that gives you an entire list of subdomains that already exist. And then we're going to take a tool like AltDNS. Uh, DNS is another one. There's a bunch of these tools. I prefer AltDNS. You're going to take AltDNS and you're going to feed it the current list of domains you have. And you're going to provide it a list of permutations and that's going to generate an entire list of domains that could potentially exist okay i know this is all a lot of information i'm throwing at you why don't we just take a look maybe it'll all make more sense what i was saying earlier was you want to find a list of domains for your company already in this case i've already created this i've created my own company called hack with nohamsek and these are all the domains that i found 
doesn't matter how I found them. I use Circuit SH, I use Sublist or whatever I want. And then I also have my permutations. And again, these are not, you know, this is not an, a comprehensive list. You want to have more of them. Alt DNS provides you a giant list. I think it's like 200 different words. But these are the things that I thought were valuable for this company. And obviously, I want to keep it short for the sake of this uh, video. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all DNS and we're going to say, hey, I want you to intake the list of domains and I want you to output uh, all of the domains that you're going to create using my permutations into alt output.txt. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in just a bit. And that is going to come back and it's going to give us all these different domains. So again, you can see I had admin dash API in there. It added API to it. Some of these are going to be garbage like this one. We're not going to be able to find anything there, but you can see this adding admin dash to it, you know, dash admin here and so on. You can see it's adding all of these different permutations, api.test, app.dev and so on. So those are the four keywords that I've given it, but now we're going to give it to shuffle DNS and we're going to say, Hey, what I want you to do is, again, if you don't know how to use Shuffle DNS, you don't know how stop the brute forcing works, go watch a previous episode. But Shuffle DNS is going to take this list that we just created using uh, Alt DNS. It's going to use our resolvers and it's going to spit out the list final.txt, which is all the domains that we're able to resolve from this giant list of Alt uh, output. And as soon as this is done, it's going to spit out more domains. And we're going to take a look at what this looks like. So this is Alt output. Uh, it created about 165 potential domains. And out of those 165 domains, nine of them were valid. And that's in addition to the other domains that I had. So originally my list of domains was seven and that's what I had. And then in addition to that, we have found all these different ones, which could give us a final list like this that we can hack on and you can see now, not only we have app, but we also have app dev, we have dashboard, we have admin, admin API. And these are a list of unique domains that I wouldn't have not found if it wasn't for these different permutations. So in the previous video, when I talked about subdomain brute forcing, I said that I don't use subdomain brute forcing. I don't think that it is something that's worth the time and effort for big organizations. But obviously this is different. This is kind of doing subdomain brute forcing, but instead of brute forcing for thousands of domains, I'm just using this to extend my attack surface and undercovering more and more subdomains. In a lot of cases, I'm hoping to uncover development staging sites because those are the ones I will have more information left behind, like, like files and folders that are not meant to be publicly visible, or maybe they have source code, whatever that is. So that's why I want to look for these different environments and permutations. So. Let me know, what do you think? Do you think this is worth doing? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you do this in your day-to-day -day hunting. Do you do it on your engagements? Is this worth the investment and worth the time? I personally think so, but I wanna hear from you and see what you think as well. All right, that's it. That was the whole video. If you haven't already, please, please, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna support the channel, I've actually opened up memberships. You can actually become a member, become a Nahomi, support the channel, and also get exclusive access to videos, my live streams that are not gonna be publicly posted and watch them on your own time. Okay, that's it. See you in the next video.